Hello there. Welcome to Mash on This, Mashable's daily culture and entertainment show that gives you tomorrow's biggest news stories today. I'm your host, Anderson Cooper's much younger, hot Asian side piece, also known as Tony Lee. On Mash on This, we give you a quick rundown of what we think is the best the internet has to offer. Be sure to tell us what you think in the comments, and we'll get to them at the end of the show. Here we go. All right. Hmm. Since we're basically living in the movie the day after tomorrow, before we get into the thick of it, I want to bring us back to a less frightening time when we were in the height of, quote, peak television. The Red Wedding episode of Game of Thrones, formerly known as The Reigns of Castamere, premiered exactly four years ago today. And as horrific and gruesome as this episode of GOT was, it doesn't hold a candle to what's actually happening right now, IRL. Oh my gosh, so scary. All right, yesterday, President Trump spoke at length about his decision to withdraw the US from the Paris Climate Agreement. And nope, it was not the end of the House of Cards. This really happened. But here's the thing, a lot of what Trump said was actually factually incorrect. Trump said that in order to fulfill his, quote, solemn duty to protect Americans, the U.S. will withdraw from the Paris Agreement, but begin negotiations to re-enter either the Paris Accord or a really entirely new transaction on terms that are fair to the United States, its businesses, its workers, its people, its taxpayers. Yet, the Paris Treaty isn't something that one country, or even many countries, can renegotiate on their own. It's all or nilch. Also, in a speech, Trump cited an analysis that claimed that the U.S. Com commitment under the Paris Agreement would cost the U.S. nearly $3 trillion and eliminate 6.5 million industrial sector jobs by 2040. But California's economy grew 40% faster than the rest of the U.S. last year, even as the Golden State carried out aggressive policies for boosting renewable energy, energy efficiency, and zero emission vehicles. Governor Jerry Brown told reporters, California's economy and America's economy are boosted by, the following, by following the Paris Agreement. These are only two out of the many things that Trump got very, very wrong. <sighs> For more information, make sure you read Maria Gallucci and Andrew Friedman's in-depth article on Mashable.com. A little plug there. So just so we don't end this on a sad note, there's actually a silver lining here that'll make you feel a little bit better. Trump has to wait three full years to withdraw from the U.S., for, sorry, withdraw the U.S. from the Paris Agreement. This means Trump can't withdraw until November 5th, 2019. And even then, it'll take another year for the U.S. to officially leave. Phew, for now. Okay, I'm in love with this next story because it's very near and dear to my heart. Ariana Grande! Tickets for Ariana Grande's benefit concert, One Love Manchester, went on sale at 10 a.m. yesterday. The show was expected to sell out as people from all over the world want to attend the concert and pay tribute to the 22 people killed in the attack last week. Unsurprisingly, the show sold out in less than 10 minutes. All good, right? Wrong. Scalpers took advantage of the demand for the tickets and started reselling their tickets on eBay at values between $258 to $645. Not only that, thousands of people submitted fake applications for the free tickets reserved for the concert goers who attended Ariana Grande's concert at the night of the attack. Not only is this insulting to those affected by the terrorist attacks, but it's just indecent to try to profit off of a charity event. Ugh. Ariana Grande fans, also known, also known as Arianators, blasted the scalpers on Twitter. And so, to eBay, so, sorry, eBay on Twitter. So eBay decided to take down all listings of the benefit concert and restrict the sellers' accounts. Stay strong and stick together, Arianators. I'm with you. Okay, my favorite movie is coming out. And so coming right off of one great female superstar, Ariana Grande, and onto an awesome female superhero, let's talk about my favorite lasso-wielding goddess, Wonder Woman. Google's Made With Code initiative partnered with the new Wonder Woman movie to create a project meant to inspire young girls to code. The, the website lets users code three different scenes from the movie with simple coding instructions shown along the way. 
To go along with the project, the partnership set up an advanced screening of Wonder Woman where 100 teen girls from the Los Angeles area can see the movie before beginning their coding exercise. Since computer science and engineering are highly male dominated, it's important that big tech companies like Google set up initiatives like this to promote young girls everywhere to be the next Bill Gates. According to Google's own research, 7th to 12th grade girls are less likely than boys to learn computer science or even know that the field exists. Girls also have little to no computer science role models in the media, even though girls use computers and smartphones more than boys. This is a problem. In a world where 50% of the population is female, we cannot let such a lucrative field such as, such as computer science be dominated by men. What would Wonder Woman do? Be a badass coder. Wonder Woman! <laughs> Speaking of badass, last night was game one of the NBA Finals and Rihanna brought her A game, as she normally does. The queen sat courtside, heckling the Warriors, bowing to James and dabbing like the superstar that she is. Check it out. Coach talks about turnovers are just deadly against this team. And I'm sure that's something that Ty Lue is going to talk about preparing for game two. You got to give yourself a chance against this Warriors team. And the stop to take care of even though her team lost to the Golden State Warriors, Rihanna said it best as she walked past the Warriors locker room. It really doesn't matter. Beep. All right, every year I look forward to one event and one event only, the National Spelling Bee. Last night, a sixth grader from Fresno named Ananya Vine was crowned winner at the 2017 Scripps Annual Spelling Bee after breezing through um, simple words like hapapanti, gift blar, and ways goose. She finished the night with the winning word, Maricane. The Webster, uh, Web, sorry, Merriam-Webster dictionary defines Maricane as a ribbed Crepe fabric used in women's clothing? What? What even is a ribbed crepe fabric? Although, that does sound very tasty. F. Slather on some strawberry and whipped cream and mmm. After she spelled the winning word, Twitter was all over this. Most of the reactions were head scratching viewers who were like, what? Matthew Taylor said, I don't even know what Maricane is. Good for her. John Ayner Funk, or Funk, said, Maricane, a lot trickier than vlogification because it's bloody French. After she successfully spelled the winning word, the crowd went wild. But her? Let's take a look. Maricane. She knows what it means. A R O C A I N. That is correct. Congratulations, Amanda. You are the champion. I live for these winning reactions. They're just so unimpressed. They can win a freaking Nobel and they would be like, here, let's try it out. Sarah, tell me something that I would win. The Oscar goes to Tony Lee. Uh, okay. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race is Tony Lee. And how about, okay, congratulations. You are, you got into Harvard Law School. Listen, a face says a lot. And what her face is saying is, I knew I'd win, you losers. Now let me collect my shashish and GTFO out of here. Let us know your thoughts and congrats, Ananya. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. We're referring to the fidget spinners, of course. Someone built a giant rocket-powered fidget spinner, and as of noon Eastern time, the video has well over 3 million views. Check it out.
It's cool, but this thing is basically a death trap. Please do not try this at home. Leave it to the expert YouTubers to try out.